Hi everyone, it's Lorelai, and welcome to another RPG Maker With tutorial. In the last video, we made part one of the cutscene that introduces the protagonist. In this video, we'll make part two. What we want to happen is for when the player approaches the king, a second cutscene fires. We don't necessarily want our character to walk all the way up here and then talk directly with the king, although we can certainly do that. It's not very realistic, is it? So I do believe once he approaches the king, we can start that next cutscene. Normally what we could do is have one event that is set to a player touch. When the player touches this event, it'll fire off a cutscene. But in this situation, we actually have three open tiles where the player can walk up. Now we can fix that by turning this staircase into just one tile so that the character is forced to walk on top of one tile to activate that cutscene. But because this is a tutorial, let's go ahead and do something where the player can actually walk on top of all three of these and still trigger that one cutscene. To do that, we're going to use a switch. So let's create a new event here. I'm actually not going to bother naming these ones. We don't need an image for it or movement. The priority will be below character and the trigger is going to be player touch. Under event details, all we're going to do is turn a switch to on. Under game progress, control switch. We can turn switch one, which we will name cut two, okay? Then we are setting cut two to on. Then we'll press okay. And then to copy this over, I'm gonna hold down ZL and then press X to copy and then paste and then paste again. Okay, so now what happens when cut two is on? Say the player came up here, they activated these one of these events so that cut two was on, then what? Well, now we make another event that is very similar to the event we made down here, where it doesn't really matter where it is, and it's just going to auto fire. So let's put it over here, a new event. We're gonna call this one cut two. No image, no movement, no priority. And the trigger is going to be auto run. But this time we have to add a condition. We don't want this event auto running at the same time that other event is auto running. And we don't want it to auto run after that event. We need a condition to say when this is going to auto run. And that's going to be that switch that we made, cut two. So when cut two is on, this event will auto fire, will activate and auto run. So what do we want to happen? We want the player to approach the king, introduce himself, and then the king will give him that quest of going to get this powerful crystal from a dungeon. The first thing I wanna do is fade out again. I just think fading out at the beginning of a cutscene is a good way to even indicate to the player that there is a cutscene happening. So we fade out and then we're going to actually move the character to right above where they activated that switch. So either the character is here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. Once this is activated and once this new event auto fires, we're going to be transferred to this tile here. So it doesn't matter if they were on the left, on the right, they're gonna be centered. And we can say direction retain, or we can be specific and say direction up. We can fade to black, which actually means we don't need to fade out the screen. So we can go ahead and remove this if you want to. So to remove it, we'll go to the sub menu and either use the shortcut B or just click remove. Let's make our character walk up a few steps before introducing himself. So we'll go to move, set movement root of the player to move up, let's say three times. What I also wanna do is actually go to the beginning of this before we move up and I wanna change our movement speed. Instead of normal, let's make it a little slow. So he's approaching the king respectfully. And now we can begin the narration. This time our character is going to be talking. So we're gonna select face, go down to DLC character and find our guy, I believe it was 005 and the fifth face down. Then he can say, your majesty, it is I, the sword fighter Kale. Here we can write his name in, and this will show up as a little box above the message. And we're gonna keep the background window and the position down. Now the king is gonna be really happy to see him. So we're going to go to character, show balloon, and then under character, we're going to go to events, 
and then select the King event. And he can have an exclamation point, he can have a heart, he's very happy to see Kale, or maybe a silence, he forgot who's Kale. In this situation, we're just gonna do an exclamation point, and we're gonna select wait until the end. So there's going to be a few seconds of this exclamation point balloon popping up on the king. And now the king can speak, so this time we want the face to be, I believe it was under NPC. Yes, there he is. Oh, he's quite, he's quite older than I thought. <laughs> And the king can say, Kale, I'm so glad you're here. Set his name as king. And then to save some time on his next text, we're going to copy this from the submenu and then paste it. Now we can just edit this text without messing with the face or the name. It's terrible, our crystal wards are losing power. Then let's give the character a balloon. Hold down ZL and Copy that balloon, let's go all the way to the bottom, Z, L, and paste. Uh, but this time we're going to say the player character is going to have a question mark. We'll go up to the kale text, Z, L, X to copy, Z, L, A to paste. And kale is gonna ask the crystal ward, sire? What are the crystal wards? ZLX to copy, ZLA to paste, and the king will explain what the wards are. They protect the kingdom from the monsters that roam outside. Let's paste that again. And the king can say, Behold, they have lost their color. And this sort of implies that you can see the crystal. So let's go ahead and add that crystal. I'm gonna Press OK on this event, and we're going to finish this event later. You can remember that it's there. And to add the crystals, I think we're going to replace these little cross graphics with a crystal event. So let's go to the maps. Let's find the tile that's underneath, and I believe it's this one here. And we're just going to cover up those crosses so they aren't there anymore. Let's go to events. Let's click the center of one of these pedestals. I'm not going to name it. And for the image, we're going to pick a crystal object. And the king has said that it's lost its color, so I'm going to pick, I think, this crystal here. You'll notice that it's white-ish, but it doesn't have this sparkle as the crystals down here. So you're gonna pick this crystal, and I'm going to set it to a step animation, so that what it's going to do is cycle through those three frames that it has which is technically stepping. I'm also gonna turn fix direction to on. And what this does is makes it so that if the character ever tries interacting with this crystal, it's not gonna try to turn left or right or up or down to face the character. Because if it did that, then it would turn yellow or it would turn sparkly or it would turn into one of these crystals down here because it's turning left, right, up or down. With fixed direction on, it's not going to do that. We don't actually have to do anything else here. So I'm gonna press okay. And what I'd like to do is copy this event and then paste it over here. Now when the king says our crystals have lost their color, we can make the character turn left and right to look at the crystals, which is also gonna help the player understand that those two crystals are the ones we're talking about. So to do that, we're going to go to move. We're going to go to set movement root for the player. And we're going to set it so that the player turns left. We're going to wait, um, not 60 frames, let's say 30 frames. And then the character can turn right. Then we'll wait again, 30 frames. And then the player is going to turn up so that they're looking back at the king. We're gonna copy the king's text again. Paste it here. And now the king's finally gonna tell him what he needs our protagonist to do. I need you to acquire a powerful relic from deep within the crystal mines. It is called the king's crystal. Now something fun that we could do here is do you see control character reference above the text there? 
If we press Y, it shows us all these things that we can add to our text, including changing the color. So what I'm thinking is we change the color of the king's crystal to color number 17, which is a bright yellow. So let's do that. I'm going to edit this, slash, capital C, bracket, one, seven, bracket. Then we can type the king's crystal. If you needed to set the color back to the original color, if you continue to expand on this, then you would say backslash C bracket zero bracket, and that will turn it back to the original color. But we don't have to do that here because that's the end of our text. Okay, so I need you to acquire powerful relic. It's called the king's crystal. And then let's just say it will charge up our crystal wards. And our guy can say something like, understood, I will leave immediately. And the king will say, it will be dangerous. Lyra will accompany you. She is a crystal healer. Before you leave for the cave, buy her some equipment with the gold from the chest. Now we're basically done with this cutscene. All we need to do now is add a new party member, Lyra. So let me go ahead and quickly make this character. Okay, so here is Lyra that I quickly drafted up. She is a crystal healer. Her profile is a powerful healer. She doesn't have any initial equipment because that is something we're gonna have to buy for her as sort of a tutorial in buying and equipping gear and no traits. And her class is called crystal healer. She's sort of a mage and a healer, so she's got high MP, high magic attack, and magic defense. She's gonna have her own skills once we get to that section of the tutorial, and I gave her magic, staff, and light armor. So I'll press OK. We'll go back to our cutscene event, go down to event details, go all the way down to the bottom, and then under party, change members, we're going to add Lyra, and then press OK. Then we can have a little text box that says, Lyra has joined the party. We'll put that as a dim background in the middle. Then perhaps Lyra can say, it is an honor to meet you, Kale. And that should be the end of this cutscene. So now what we're going to do is add a switch to the end here and call it cut to done. Turn that to on. And then we will make a new event page with the condition cut to is done. And that means this event will switch to event page two when this switch cut to done is on and this event doesn't actually do anything. So that will keep that first event from firing again and again. Next, what I think I'll do is put Lyra as a character right here. I'm going to find her character under DLC character. I believe it was 16. Yep. And we don't actually have to add anything else to this event. She's just going to be standing there. But then what I think we're going to do is make a new event page. And it's going to have a blank graphic. But this time the condition is going to be if actor Lyra uh, is in the party. So ideally, when she joins the party, this event should switch to this page, which is completely blank. So it'll look like she left her standing position and then joined Kale as part of his, uh, his party. Now it's very possible I'm forgetting something, so let's go ahead and play and see how this looks as it is right now. Our hero Kale finds himself summoned by the king. After days of travel, he has finally reached the castle. Use the right blah, 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 right? Okay, so we can move. And then when we come up here, fades out, we walk up slowly to the king. Your majesty, it is I, the sword fighter, Kale. Kale, I'm so glad you're here. It's terrible. Our crystal wards are losing power. The crystal wards, sire? They protect the kingdom from the monsters that roam outside. Behold, they have lost their color. He looks around. I need you to acquire a powerful relic from deep within the crystal caves. It is called the King's Crystal. And look, our color change worked. It will charge up our crystal wards. Understood, I will leave immediately. 
It will be dangerous. Lyra will accompany you. She is a crystal healer. Before you leave for the cave, buy her some equipment with the gold from the chest. There she goes. Lyra has joined the party. It's an honor to meet you, Kale. And now we are free to walk around and she trails on behind us. So that is our cutscene. In the next video, we'll add a mini quest to grab money from a treasure chest before allowing the player to leave. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing for more RPG Maker videos. I will see you in the next one.